All right, everybody, happy Monday. Uh, we got a great show for you today. This is our last of the series, Spiritual Things, and today we are talking about Christian Yoda. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> sorry. All right, everybody, happy Monday. We got a great show for us today. We finish our series on Spiritual Things. Today we are talking about Christian... <laughs> sorry, I just, like, I think the looking down and, like, saying it wrong, and as I'm saying it, I'm, like, so confused. <laughs> All right, everybody. Happy Monday. Uh, welcome to the In Doubt Show. We continue our series on spiritual things, and we're talking about something very important today. We're talking about Christian Yoda. Christian Yoda. Now, um, you know, I know Yoda pants are super trendy, and uh, Baby Yoda's all the rage these days, but I, I haven't seen Star Wars, so I don't know, but I think it's important for us to talk about the things that are hard, right? Like, I'm, it's, it's yoga. It's not Yoda. Yoga. Oh, yoga. Yeah. It might just not be funny. <laughs> I I don't know. I do. I want to believe that it's funny, <laughs> yeah. but both times that we've done it. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry. We can't win them all. And um, I got nothing. Yeah. It's just, it was way funnier in my head. Enjoy the show. I don't know. Happy Monday, folks. It's time for... That was terrible. Um, happy Monday. Oh. Excuse me. Wow. Sorry, sorry <laughs> that was that a little up. rude. <laughs> sorry. Um, well, we're off to a terrible Monday start. Here we go. Hope you had a great weekend. Happy Monday. Uh, happy Monday to those in the live studio audience. We're grateful that you're here with us. Thank you for coming. You know, a beautiful sunny July day. And here they are. They are just so committed. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy Monday. How you guys doing? Good. Wow. I'm doing, Terrible. <laughs> gosh, to say doing great, but oh. he, he stole the he stole the thunder. The Tony. <laughs> oh, can you do Tony the Tiger? Uh, no, but I know someone who can. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Can <you> do- <laughs> <laughs> there's a secret guy in the room right now yeah. and he is a phenomenal voiceover you know what in fact can you do tony the tiger because if you can i'm gonna just you're not gonna be on screen no one will know who you are <laughs> listen to this folks. kellogg's frosted flake series <laughs> i'm passing him the mic they're great <laughs> yeah there we go it's perfect <laughs> but do you guys want to hear more Cheer yeah. if you want to hear more. Do you want to hear more, folks, that, in, the, in the audience? Do you want to hear more from this? Oh, they want to hear more. We oh, have an amazing oh. guy here, and I can't. You're going to meet him very soon. Oh yeah. But I'm going to just. What, uh, we, what should we do? I lo- I think his Morgan Freeman is. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, <laughs> Morgan Freeman. Here we go. We'll pass it on. This is Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Studio. Andrew didn't realize what a mistake <laughs> it would be to give me the mic. <laughs> he maybe wouldn't get it back. <laughs> he didn't know. <laughs> There's a lot of power with this mic. <laughs> and, well, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, we got to do a couple more. Um, uh, okay, just two more, two more. Two Let's more. do um, Winnie the Pooh. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. yeah, That's a good one, yeah. Oh, bother. <laughs> uh, I don't seem to have any honey with me today. <laughs> and I... I, 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 I need my fix. <laughs> <laughs> I need my fix. Last one, Barack Obama. Barack Obama. Uh, uh, no, 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 fellas. Uh, you know, I, I listen to your guys' podcast uh, <laughs> all Obama, the time. Obama, Obama listens to podcast. <laughs> and, 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 and you know uh, what you guys have to say? Uh, I, I got to say, it, you bring up some pretty interesting discussions <laughs> and, and, and raise a, a lot of interesting points. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I think there's value in what you guys do. Uh, I want to encourage you uh, to keep doing uh, wow. what you're doing. Thank you, Mr. President. Wow. 
Uh, th- thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. I'll be, I'll, I'll be oh, here all week. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Dude, I'm crying. Oh, man. Wow. Holy crap. <laughs> That's a... Uh... Okay, oh. I can't wait for you guys to meet this man. Oh, Try to pick. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a, he can. He, I I have so season many more. Two. Season, season two. Season two. Season two. Oh, season man. two. That's a little sneak peek. Unveiling. Season two. The great unveiling. It's going to be amazing. September is going to be a really good time. Um, Ooh, but uh, don't overhype it. He says okay. Okay. Uh, in his normal voice. Um, <laughs> but no. Uh, uh, oh. Maybe it is. Wait, uh, wait maybe, maybe this just, whole time. Maybe Obama is his normal voice. Well, this whole time he's been not talking. Okay. Um, that's funny. Uh, but uh, as uh, Barack said, we talk about some important <laughs> things. And I'm really grateful that he supports us. But uh, something we want to talk about today is very important. Mm. We're going to be talking about yoga. As we continue our spiritual things series, we are talking about uh, yoga today. And we have Dr. Chris Berg with us again. He's been with us talking about the Enneagram. And uh, his book is on the Enneagram and yoga. So we thought, let's have him in again. He's an expert in this topic. And we can uh, talk specifically about yoga this week. And um, I am I have so many questions. Oh, yeah. I have so many questions for him. And so uh, let's just, I think we should just dive right in. Yeah. We uh, we had a good time in that beginning there. Hope you guys enjoyed. I know the studio audience was howling. <laughs> they were muted, but they were howling. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, anyways... Uh, <laughs> We uh, we love you guys. We hope. I, I want to ask you to comment below how you're doing and if you enjoy the show. But sometimes I'm a little nervous. <laughs> ben, I hate the show. Ben, ben might sign in and be like, "Stop it." <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, but uh, let's dive in with Dr. Chris Berg. I know he has a lot to say, and then we'll uh, come back after and share some of our thoughts. Here we go. All right, we have Dr. Chris Berg again with us. Thank you so much for taking time to join uh, us again. Uh, we were so blessed by our last conversation on Enneagram. And I, like I told you right before we started, it's like if I didn't lose all my friends then, I feel like after this episode, I will lose all my friends. So let's uh, see what happens. But today we're talking about yoga. And I know a lot of people um, do yoga. A lot of Christians engage with yoga and think that they can redeem it or think about the Lord when they do it, or it's just stretches. What's the big deal? And so uh, we're going to dive into some stuff and maybe think and realize, ah, it is a big deal actually. And um, so Chris, tell us a little bit about, before we dive in, um, I mean, I know you introduced yourself in our other episode, but a quick, in case someone didn't watch that one and they're just diving in, tell us a little bit about who you are, where you are, what you're doing. Sure. So my name is uh, Dr. Chris Berg, and I reside in Durham, North Carolina in the United States. And currently I serve as a pastor of our church, a Spirit of Truth Church. And I also work in at uh, Manor University and at Ecclesia University teaching undergraduate and master courses in Christian apologetics, theology, uh, New Testament, Old Testament studies, things of that nature. And I also work in missions. And we do missions outreach to students here in North Carolina in the public school system. And I've recently partnered with a ministry of a friend of mine as well to begin leading tours at uh, public museums on creation. And so we actually use their exhibits to teach creation. So that's something new that we've been doing for the last couple months. It's been a lot of fun. Oh, that's so great, man. That's amazing. Good for you. And you've written a book Mm -hmm. and released a book. You didn't mention that. I mean, you're doing a lot. Yeah, yeah. And the book really is what led to some of this type of stuff. The, yeah. My interest in the New Age movement's inception into Christianity, specifically using the vehicles of yoga, Christian yoga, and the Christian Enneagram to do so. So, yeah, that's been a, a fun little project as well. Man. And so when you say Christian Enneagram, Christian yoga, uh, do you kind of use that? Is that kind of a, an oxymoron? Like, do they actually go together or is that... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so what the, what this means when we talk about Christian yoga or Christianity grammar or putting Christian in terms of something like that, it's an attempt at syncretism. Mm. So it's an attempt to blend Christianity with another ritual or practice or a form of spiritual discipline. Mm. And so that's more what it is. It's it's yeah. in some sense it's an oxymoron because the philosophies and underlying worldviews are diametrically opposed, mm-hmm. but uh, it's an attempt at syncretism. Yeah, totally. Uh, blending. Fascinating. Um, so with yoga, um, I think 
it'll help us understand if we can just go back and maybe get a little bit of the history. Maybe some people have no idea about the history of yoga. And I know sure. you're uh, quite um, resourced in that. So maybe tell us a little bit about the history of yoga, where it came from and, and what it was used for and all that. So just there's a lot of misinformation about the history of yoga and about yoga in general. And that's being propagated primarily to keep people confused into thinking that it's something that's just a stretch technique or pattern. But the actual origin of yoga is as a means of salvation in Hinduism. Hmm. It's thousands of years old. And yoga is a method of worship of the Hindu gods. And it's specifically a path of salvation. And this is built right into the definition of yoga, which is essentially achieving oneness with God. And yoga is built off of eight arms or limbs. And we won't go through all of them right now. But the eighth one, the one that you're trying to achieve through doing the entire process of yoga, is enlightenment. Hmm. So built into yoga's very core philosophy and what it is, is an attempt at spiritual awareness, at enlightenment, and oneness with God. And so that's yoga's path of salvation. That's Hinduism's path of salvation. And so you engage, people throughout history have engaged in these posture and breathing techniques and actually some other things too, to achieve total control over their body, their breath, and their mind. And this actually would lead to a nullification of the senses. In fact, yoga is also called the way of dying. Hmm. You're essentially training your body to be suspended at the cusp of death. It's what it was designed to do. And this would allow you to then engage in things like transcendental meditation, having out-of-body experiences, and again, achieving enlightenment through self-realization or heightened levels of consciousness where you began to realize you were one with the divinity. Hmm. And over time, yoga has developed into many different paths, but it was actually brought over to the United States uh, by Carl Jung uh, and some others as well. He wasn't the only one, but he was one of the main proponents. And he brought it over. We'll talk more about him later. But from there, it spread into three kind of American styles. You got the Hollywood style. That's the physical. Oh, do it for the stretch. Do it for the exercise. The Harvard style. Do it because of the yogic philosophy. That's the Hinduistic philosophy. And then the cultic versions, uh, which are the spiritual ones. And believe it or not, the larger Christian organizations are the cultic ones. They're Mm. the ones that focus on yoga for spirituality. And we'll get into that probably in a moment. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Okay. So, so that's a br- brief history. Yeah. yeah. Brief history. So Carl, you said Carl y- Yoon? Yoon. Yeah. He's the one who brought it into the United States of America. And when was that? One, you of, know? The, one of the big ones. What's that? When was that? When that, when it came to the when US? Was that? I'd have to check that up to exactly see yeah. at what point in his life he was engaging, um, engaging in that. I just wonder uh, how but, long know, it's been things, around for like yeah, here. It's, it's not been around too long yeah um in in terms of this the problem is you have him you have him and others doing it so trying to pin down a specific date yeah yeah um but i'll say this yoga really started to take hold in the 70s Mm. because once it was linked with the new age movement you get a massive uh essentially propagation of yoga throughout the united states so again during that whole sense of spiritualism 60s and 70s that's when it's going to make the major inroads Wow. And it started with New Age and, you know, it wasn't like a Christian thing in the 60s and 70s, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no. The Christian yoga is all relatively recent. Mm-hmm. Christian yoga is comparatively very recent. Okay, yeah. wow. Some of the main people that attempted to do it, we'll talk about in here. These are all people still doing it today. Yeah. So this is all very, very recent, last 20, 30 years. Let's, years ta- let's talk about that. Let's talk about how it, how it uh, seeped into kind of our Christian worldview and been accepted sure well christianity's always had a bad rap for denying the body people people would often accuse christianity of that saying well you don't care about the body you don't care about physical health and so there were christians who were engaging in yoga they recognized that hinduistic yoga was not good because you're literally doing these postures modeled after the gods and they said well can we modify it can we syncretize it with christianity can we remove the Hinduism from the yoga? And what they did do, what they did accomplish, and my research shows this, is they did drop 
for the most part, a lot of the Hindu god names, and they tried to associate it with different things and mm. you know more Christian sounding things. Uh, but the problem is, and this is from the Christian Yoga Association, uh, by the way, they define yoga at Christian yoga as quote a physical practice of connecting profoundly and intimately to our Creator and living God Jesus Christ with our entire being, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So Christian yoga, according to the Christian Yoga Association, is not just a stretch technique. Hmm. It is a way to connect with God. Hmm. And not just on a spiritual level, but on a physical, mental, and emotional level. Now, let's break that down for a moment. Do we argue that Peter, Paul, and James lacked in their relationship with God because they did not have Christian yoga? Because this seems to be saying that the apostles and the people in the early church didn't have the full picture. Hmm. That their relationship with God could have been much deeper than it was because they were not connected truly and intimately because they did not have Christian yoga. Additionally, Christian yoga states that union is, quote, the uniting of our breath, body, and spirit in Christ, truly becoming one with him in the sacred space of his presence. It's all Christian yoga association. Hmm. But what's the problem there? Truly becoming one with him? Well, if the blood of Christ did not bring us into union with Christ, hmm. where we are baptized with him, we, are, we, we died with him and are raised with him, then we have a serious problem mm-hmm. because we aren't actually fully saved under this definition until we do Christian yoga. Hmm. And so right here, right off the bat, <clears throat> We are talking about something fundamentally different than a bunch of stretches. We're talking about an esoteric way of connecting with God. Hmm. Well, it's so fascinating. And it's mm-hmm. so, it's almost so bizarre to hear like, um, like, is it really that big of a deal? I'm sure a lot of young people are, are listening thinking, okay, I'm literally just doing stretches. Yeah. The, and the problem is, and this is where we get into the design of yoga. So, we have to remember that yoga done properly as a practice includes the stretching and the breath exercises and, and everything with it, right? And if you remove the breath exercises, you're not really doing yoga as you should do it. You're kind of just taking a piece of it. And then no one's going to deny, for example, that the stretches may have physical effect. And you're moving your body, you're stretching things, and it's going to have a positive physical effect. The problem is that's not what yoga was designed for. Hmm. And all of the major associations and the major practitioners recognize this. It was not designed for physical benefit. That's a byproduct. It was designed for spiritual benefit. And so even in Christian yoga, now I'm going to give you some other things here. Even in Christian yoga, yoga is here to manipulate physical nature, your body, your breath, to foster spiritual experiences. Holy yoga instructor Brooke Boone states that we are able to get in touch with the Holy Spirit by following the outpourings of our hearts and using the postures of Hatha yoga together with spiritual intent of bhakti yoga Hmm. to experience the spiritual growth. Again, getting in touch with the Holy Spirit through yoga as though we have to do something to reach God. Hmm. They also believe that union with God is esoteric. Brooke Boone, again, holy yoga creator states that Her version of bhakti yoga leads to a state of mind that can be described as being immersed in the Holy Spirit, and that through these ancient disciplines, Christians can find communion with Christ or Christ awareness. Again, this is her understanding of spiritual growth. This is Christian yoga's spiritual growth. Hmm. It's esoteric. It's being aware of Christ, submerging yourself in the Holy Spirit. In fact, the word used immersed, kind of like baptized. Baptized Hmm. means to be immersed. It's almost as though Christian yoga is a way of baptism. Hmm. I mean, we are getting very off Christian theology, even though they attempt to to put a Christian veneer over this, we are getting deep into Hindu Hmm. theology and worldview. Hmm. Um, Breath control is energy control. Susan Bordenkircher, Outstretched in Worship, states, quote, God's presence is in your breath. This is a redefinition of God. This is one of the main ones, by the way. Holy yoga and outstretched in worship are the two of the big ones. God's presence is in your breath. Your breath is what connects your mind to your body. And she argues that the breath is, quote, also your gateway 
Hmm. to actually feeling the Holy Spirit moving and working within you. God's presence is only as far away as your breath. We've just made the Holy Spirit out to be our physical breath. And we've confined his presence to our, our physical breath. And so you've got a redefinition of God in here hmm. as well. And the problem is people don't see this. They, they hear the words. They might do, oh, I'm just doing the movements. We'll get to that in a moment too, because there's a lot of studies that have come out now, and I'll share some with you, that show that the longer you engage in yoga, the less likely you are to be a Christian, the more likely you are to become a Buddhist or just spiritual. So even for people who are at the cusp here, who are, who are thinking, well, I'm just doing it for physical benefit. I'll show you the, the results from the surveys. It's wow. not pretty. Wow. Yeah, we'll get into that in a bit. Um, and finally, the relationship and connection with God in Christian yoga is the product of human effort. You have to get good at Christian yoga to be connected with God. So th th these are the problems with it. It's not just stretching. And people say that, and we'll get into why they do that, because maybe they join for that reason. That's common. It's common to join for the stretching, but yeah. you stay for the spiritual benefits. That's also just as common. Yeah, and it's it's the same thing. Like, would you find in your circles when you kind of dissect this? Um, I remember we talked about Enneagram. You said, you know, 50% of people are like, wow, I can't believe it. And they're shocked and they kind of readjust life. And then the other 50 get mad at you and say, you're crazy. Would you say it's the same thing with yoga? Because I feel like a lot of yeah. people don't know this stuff. They, they don't. Yeah. And in fact, actually, even some teachers don't know this stuff. And I'll share a quote on that too later. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the problem is, is that um, when concerning health, people's health is very important to them. And when you tell somebody that what you're doing that's making you healthy is actually wrong, it's sinful, actually, uh, they can get very angry. Mm -hmm. um, and they can say that you're attacking me and my ability to stay healthy. And how dare you tell me how I can relate to God? Mm. Well, I'm not the one saying how you can relate to God. God himself is. Mm. For example, when we go into scripture, we find that there are good things people can do, like sacrifice in the Old Testament, that if offered the wrong way, become unauthorized. And the people are judged for offering unauthorized sacrifice. This happens uh, with, with Moses and the priests when they get judged with the fire. It happens with Saul when he also offers an unauthorized sacrifice. It's not that the sacrifice itself was, was bad itself. It's that he wasn't supposed to be the one to offer it. And so you have the situation where we don't get to choose how we approach God. We don't get to choose how we relate to God. He dictates that. Hmm. And he has said, the way you will relate to me is through the new covenant. And the new covenant is through the blood Jesus Christ shed on the cross. Amen. No other way. There's no, no other, other way. way. There's no other way. Well, and if, if you'd like, I could share th uh, five quick clips about the theology of Christian yoga yeah, so please, you kind of get a feel for please, it. Please, please. Sure. Yep. So five main theological tenets of Christian yoga. So Christian yoga creates a new form of divine revelation. In other words, in some sense, it's a new version of scripture that's physical, emotional, esoteric, and Gnostic. In other words, you're going to learn things about God through Christian yoga and your relationship with him that you can only learn through hmm. Christian yoga. Hmm. Even the disciples didn't even have access to this. The early church didn't even have access to this. Christian yoga is going to turn uh, the Holy Spirit into breath and hmm. impersonalize him hmm. and at times uh, even manipulate. I've even seen some yoga practitioners say, breathe in the Holy Spirit, exhale the Holy Spirit as though they're controlling it or him. Christian yoga also places the purpose of humanity and mankind on yoga itself. You have to achieve union with God through Christian yoga. That's the best way to do it. It also replaces penal substitutionary atonement or Jesus' death on the cross mm. with a works-based salvation. Your relationship with God is based on your ability and skill at Christian yoga. And finally, it replaces a spirituality that is moral and holy with a spirituality that is health-based and esoteric. And so on every level, we're reforming Christian theology and making it Hinduistic. Wow. And I, I, I honestly don't think a lot of people realize that at all. Mm -mm. No, they don't. Not at all. Yeah, they don't. Um, so talk about a little bit about the statistics you mentioned of like, okay, a Christian dives into yoga. They're just doing it for the stretches. What are the stats of what happens to people who kind of ignore the, you know, the roots of yoga? Mm hmm well, and, and to give some background to that, by the way, uh, the largest missionary organization in the world uh, is not actually a Christian mission organization. Hmm. It's actually India's Vishva Hindu Parashat. It's Hinduism. Hmm. And they came out with this quote, quote, our mission in the West has been crowned with fantastic success. Hinduism is becoming the dominant world religion and the end of Christianity has come near. 
Wow. And how do they do missions? Yoga. That's one that's that's yoga is do they say the that? Missionary. Do they say yes. that? Yes. Yeah. Yoga is the missionary arm of Hinduism. Wow. That's what it is. Yeah. Oh boy. So when when we engage in yoga, we're actively helping their missionary efforts, even Christian yoga, because they they're remember, Hinduism's fine with syncretism. So if we get syncretistic with our Christianity and yoga, they they love that. Hmm. They'd promote Christian yoga everywhere because it's got the Hinduistic philosophy attached to it. And they said they believe the end of Christianity is here because they won. And I would agree to some extent that wow. American Christianity has become fundamentally Hinduistic in its understanding. It's the new age. The basis of new age is Hinduism. And so many Christians are engaged in this now. It's, it's uh, on some level, it's kind of mind blowing. And so again, people need to understand even when they engage in Christian yoga, they're being actively evangelized into either Hinduism directly or into a Hinduistic worldview. Hmm. Now, in 2016, Crystal Park conducted a national survey of yoga practitioners of 360 yoga students Mm -hmm. and 156 yoga teachers. And of the students, 61.3% reported that they changed their primary reason for engaging in yoga. And of those that changed, the most common new reason was spirituality. Hmm. 85.5% of teachers said they shifted their primary purpose. And again, spirituality was the most common reason. Hmm. Okay. Now, gets even better. In Australia, Penman Or even conducted, worse. You mean worse. Or even worse, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> worse. Penman conducted a survey uh, that found that yoga practice, quote, may correlate with a possible reduction in Christian orientation with years of practice up to seven years and a corresponding potential increase in non-religious spirituality and Buddhism over hmm. the same period. Heinrichs and Schrems and Versteeg argue that most people initially join yoga as pragmatists who only engage for physical benefits. But as those benefits come about, they slowly migrate toward the true goal of yoga as new spirituality. Wow. So these are peer journal peer reviewed articles. And yeah. my question is, are we actually okay with this? Wow. Are we actually okay? And can we really say, much like with the Enneagram, that there's a 0% chance that anyone we introduce to yoga will not have a tendency away from Christ? The data says no. The data says that yoga of any kind, when we introduce people to it, is going to come with syncretism, it's going to come with yogic philosophy, and it's going to have a detrimental spiritual effect on a person. So, you know, it might be okay for you. And I wouldn't deny someone saying, oh, well, yeah, that's my experience. Well, that's fine. That's your experience. But we got to take a look at the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And when we take a look at the whole thing, you're talking about eternal life. You're talking about salvation here. Yeah. yeah. And we do not play with salvation. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't play with that. Um, the bottom line is, is we don't want to be a stumbling block. And Christian yoga and things of that nature are absolutely stumbling blocks as the data shows. Wow. That's that's just so shocking to me. And so, yeah. so I have more questions. Because um, even my <laughs> sure. wife and I were talking about this. We we're just like, yeah, but what about, okay, so for example, you know, there's so many stretches that, uh, you know, I just told you about my pinched nerve and I'm going through physio yep. and Cairo, whatever. I don't know if some of these stretches that the physiotherapist is giving me is actually connected to some yoga, you know, stretch with some random sure. name. Or, you know, you watch football players are getting ready for a game and they're all kind of doing certain stretches. I don't know if that stretch is a yoga stretch. I don't know if he knows that stretch is a yoga stretch. So what happens when we're, you know, doing physio, trying to heal, and we are absolutely oblivious to the hundreds and hundreds or or maybe thousands, I don't know, of poses with names that actually have these weird ritualistic, you know, foundations. Well, the beauty is, is that Hinduism and yoga don't own the body, nor do they own movements, nor do they own poses and positions. Right. <laughs> so okay. that's the so, nice thing. Okay. Um, I wanted to just get that out because I'm like, I don't know. I'm yeah. doing physio right now. I go, I'm go. i going later today. And I'm like, I don't know if they're going to make me do some weird stuff. Yeah. Well, we can always ask and say, you know, I would rather not do anything with social with yoga. You can always ask that and just say that outright. Mm. You know, and, and they they will know if they do use those things and then they'll not include them. Yeah. Um, so you can always say that. Uh, but the thing is, is yoga is a system. It is a system designed with a purpose. It's not just one posture. It's all of the postures, all of the breaths, all of the transitions, all of the poses in the right timing done properly. 
that's yoga. Right. So we don't have to worry about a, a stretch that we do. Oh my goodness, did I copy yoga pose? Yeah. Eh, irrelevant. Okay. Um, yeah. They yes, don't because you, I was thinking about this. I was starting to get freaked it's, out. I'm like, oh crap. I've probably done a bunch of yoga poses and now I'm screwed. Yeah. So yeah. I'm grateful that uh, <laughs> that is out there. I, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and again, just because somebody did yoga once doesn't mean they're demon possessed or they're, they're going to spiral out into some crazy non-Christian thing. It's over time, the teachings and the philosophy and everything like that, that begins mm-hmm. to get ingrained. It's discipleship is what it is. Like I said, it's a missionary arm. It's discipleship. Mm-hmm. Um, and Christian yoga even affirms that what they do is a form of discipleship. It's a form of growing closer to God. So mm-hmm. um, it is discipleship. Okay, so just the random stretch at a physiotherapist or a, a football team warming up for the game. That's not, that's fine. They're not aware <laughs> they're fine. doing the whatever pose. They're just literally getting ready for the game. Yeah, you're, you're probably fine. Uh, unless you're all like, let's go into tree pose now and pretend that we're the earth. I mean, <laughs> if they say that, I, I'd probably say, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I'll pass. <laughs> Thank you very much, you bunch of tree trunks. Okay, so... Um, yeah. That makes a lot more sense. So, so, but there are obviously a lot of Christians who are actually practicing yoga to a T with all those things you mentioned. Yes. Yeah, like yes. That's, that's a, the, go ahead. That's the dominant way to do it. Yeah. And a lot of Christians are doing that. Yes, that is correct. And the stats are out saying when they do that, a lot of them will drift off into a non-religious spirituality. Yeah. It, it It's, yeah. And they change their reasons. So somebody says, well, I'm just doing it for the physicality. Yeah, but give it a couple years hmm. and you might actually shift on that. That's what the data seems to show. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And I always think about it this way, and I don't know if you agree with this, but I know you mentioned like, you know, you do a one, you do a yoga once and, you know, as long as you're going to be demonized or whatever. But I do feel like sometimes, you know, Satan doesn't wait for a proper invitation. Even if you naively open the door. Yeah. I, he's not a gentleman like Jesus knocking at the door waiting for a proper invitation. Yeah. If we walk into something, we play the Ouija board once as a joke with our friends or we're doing yoga once or whatever. I do think there are a lot of risks. So I have a whole lot on that. Okay, please. <laughs> because that's true. So when I made the comment earlier, I just meant from the sake of, you know, somebody who's like, oh my goodness, I attended a yoga class six years ago is my, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Like that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, however, uh, and this is a, a comment I wrote down here. Yoga is like Russian roulette. Hmm. You pull the trigger, you live, you get high from doing it in the sense of, oof, you know, euphoric sense of exercise and it feels great. But the bullet comes due at some point in some way. And for some people, that first pull of the trigger is it. Hmm. So yes, even doing it once can yes. cause serious issues. Yes. Um, yeah, my comment earlier was just to say like, People might, oh my goodness, what do I do? You know, that kind of yeah. thing. Or specifically, no, even, even like the soccer player stretching, you know, like, yeah, it's like you're not going to be, you know, calling on to weird spirits. But, but if you do like this Russian roulette, that's a good way of thinking about it. You, you know, it could be the first time. It yeah, absolutely could. Because remember, it does not matter if you are doing it for, quote, the right reason mm-hmm. health, Christianity, yoga postures, and breathing are designed to cause spiritual experiences, Mm -hmm. open oneself up to demonic interactions, and encourage a Gnostic mystical oneness with God experience. Mm -hmm. For example, morphine and opioids don't care if you're focused on not getting addicted. Mm -hmm. They work on your brain in a specific way that causes addiction. Yoga is designed to have specific effects on the body, mind, and soul, whether you want it to happen or not. And as you mentioned, spiritual demonic transference is one of those things. Mm -hmm. And so, again, you won't see this in the medical literature. You've got to actually go and hunt this stuff down because most people don't even believe that it's happened. Mm -hmm. But you will find people that have been spiritually possessed, demonically harassed. In fact, I can give you now some of the things uh, that talk about that if you'd like. Yeah, please, please. Yep, please. Sure. So what are some of the dangers people have reported throughout history? Um, Permanent illness, Mm. hormonal imbalance, and, and subsequently death. And the advanced forms of pattern breathing can cause irreparable harm. Hans Ulrich Riker, in his book, The Yoga of Light, affirms these drastic consequences, saying, quote, any misunderstanding in the practice of yoga can mean death and insanity. Hmm. Yoga practice can lead to, quote, considerable pain, physical disorder, and even disease. 
Ernst Wood says that maladies that yoga can produce uh, put one at imminent risk, quote, imminent risk of the most serious bodily disorder, disease, and even madness. Wow. So yeah, this these are some of the real dangers. Then you get into the kundalini thing, which is very weird and again, sounds very foreign. What's the uh, kundalini what thing? It, what is this? So the kundalini force, the kundalini awakening is the idea that yoga is designed to open the seven chakras. This is the Hinduistic understanding, but that the, the procedures itself are designed to open the seven chakras and release the kundalini energy at the base of your spine into essentially the crown chakra, your brain. And essentially, it causes a wide variety of supernatural phenomena. Gopi Krishna argues that many modern teachers of yoga are woefully unaware that the awakening of kundalini through yoga can, quote, lead to awful mental states of almost every form of mental disorder, from hardly noticeable aberrations to the most horrible forms of insanity, to neurotic and paranoid states, to megalomania, and some other really weird things. Swami Naravananda also describes the potential phenomena saying that the kundalini energy can, quote, make the mind fickle, bring insomnia, brain disorder, insanity, and incurable disease, ruining the whole life of a person. He also states that he has, quote, seen many become insane, many get brain defects, and many others get some incurable diseases after deep sorrow. So these are things that don't get reported often. Mm-hmm. We don't hear about them because they're bad PR, mm-hmm. but they actually do happen. Uh, and I've actually dealt with a Hindus who converted to Christianity who were so deep in Hinduism, they had demonic issues. Wow. There's no question about it. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, it's very real stuff. We don't, you know, in the West, we often think of things as spiritual light. You know, we mm-hmm. don't think about the serious spiritual consequences, but uh, Hindus especially are very aware of this kind of stuff. People mm-hmm. who do yoga, you know, from the Hindu persuasion are very aware that yoga causes these things uh, and can cause these things. Um, and if you just hunt around, you'll find more more stories on that. But yeah, those are just some of the the negative effects. And again, yoga doesn't care whether you believe in it or not. Yoga doesn't care whether you think that could happen or not. Yoga is designed to do it. Wow. And I, I know someone personally who, when I was bringing up the conversation that we were going to be talking about yoga, and she just mentioned, you know, I uh, tried yoga because I was having back pain from a car accident or whatever it was. And um, like it made things significantly worse. And then when she stopped yoga, yeah. all the pain went away. And she yes. thought it. That, she thought she thought it felt like it was like a a very spiritual, like um, I I don't use it the term lightly like or loosely like a demonic presence that was yeah. in her body. Yeah. No, there's no question about it. Yeah. Demonic stuff in yoga is very associated. And here's an interesting quote too. But the average yoga instructor never mentions and may not even know the many warnings in ancient texts that hatha yoga is a dangerous tool. One can be. Uh, possessed by a Hindu deity through the altered state of consciousness induced by this practice. The problem is a lot of Christian yoga people aren't even aware of what this actually can do. Mm -hmm. They just aren't aware. And uh, one of the big things that I do want to make sure I mention um, before, before, uh, you know, we finish is at this point we have Christian alternatives. We have Christian alternatives. We have things like praise moves, which was designed by Lorette Willis as a, an, a, Christian alternative to yoga. It's Mm -hmm. just a stretching program. Mm -hmm. We have holy fit. So we've got alternatives to Christian yoga. There's actually zero reason of any kind at this point to engage in Christian yoga. And anyone out there who's in Christian yoga right now, I would highly encourage to check out praise moves or holy fit alternatives to Christian yoga. They're just simply Christian stretching programs Mm -hmm. that were developed by people who had been part of the Christian yoga, the yoga movement realized how Mm -hmm. bad it was and said, we're rejecting the whole thing and we're going to actually base this in evidence-based medicine and in scripture as opposed to Hindu philosophy. So we have really good alternatives now that there's just no reason to go to it anymore. Yeah, no excuse. There's no excuse. Mm -hmm. Could yoga be addictive like an opioid or a drug? Like if people are in it right now and we see that there's an alternative like Holy Fit or Praise Moves, but they're just not, like they just can't, Get, is that a thing where they just can't get out? Absolutely. It's, it's much like the Enneagram. The problem with yoga and Christian yoga is that it hits on a number of levels. First, it hits on the level of physicality. And if you know, if you, do, you, do you do sports much? Uh, I used to, but not as much. Okay. So you, you've heard of things probably like the runner's high or you know just, just the excitement and adrenaline you get. Totally. It's the same thing in yoga. There is absolutely a physiological hook mm-hmm. to it. There's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
on the physical side. There's also the spiritual end. If you feel as though you've been gaining spiritual insight and spiritual awareness through something, you're going to be much less likely to give it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then there's the demonic possibility, which remember, demons don't always just terrorize. They're equally likely to simply put pressure on you to react negatively when someone tells you to leave them. Hmm. So again, if, if, if there is a demonic harassment or something yeah. like that, and somebody says, oh, well, you know, just drop yoga, and then there's just an instantaneous reaction against it. That's the whole thing with the Enneagram. There's a lot of those very harsh reactions against the Enneagram in large part because of the demonic background to it. Mm-hmm. So absolutely, when you're in it, it is very hard to leave. And the further you are in it, the harder it can become. Yeah, that makes total sense. Wow. There's just so many things. It's just a uh, very eye opening to the dangers, the risks, um, and yeah. just the spiritual attachment to Hinduism and all that kind of stuff. It's just very, very mind blowing. So, so I want to ask a couple questions and I want you to answer. So say a young adult is listening or watching and they're saying, you know what? I, um, I do yoga. I love it. I do the breaths. I do all the things, but I'm honestly thinking about the Lord every time and I'm meditating on scripture all the time. How would you respond? We have to remember, and it's very, very important, that the breaths and the postures have nothing to do with your thoughts. The breaths and the postures are designed to create spiritual experiences, open the body up to demonic activity, and create a state of enlightenment or transcendental meditation. Just because you're thinking about God or thinking about Christianity does not mean that yoga is not doing those things to you. Mm. Just like uh, opioids or medicine or all these other things. I don't want to get addicted. So I'm thinking, man, I'm not going to get addicted. But my body and my brain don't care once those drugs come in. They're going to do what they're going to do. Same thing with yoga. Now, what if a young person is saying, you know what? I do the stretches, but I don't do the breathing. I don't tie them together. Am I not at risk? You're at less risk. So again, yoga does what it does when it's used as a system. Right. My recommendation would be this to this person. My recommendation would be this. Why do poses and exercises that were originally dedicated to demons and Hinduistic gods, and what's keeping you from engaging in a truly Christian stretching program Mm -hmm. that actually honors God from the foundation as opposed to trying to put a Christian paint on top? Mm Mm-hmm. And remember, just because you engage in yoga, if you in, give, if you introduce somebody else to it, can you confirm that they won't walk away from Christianity as a result later in life? Hmm. It's very dangerous when you consider not just yourself, but the impact what you do and, and share can have on others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really good word. And it's important because we're supposed to be on mission. And if we're leading people astray... And being a bad example, um, you don't know how influential or how influenced someone else will be. Maybe a young Christian and you encourage them to go do yoga and just like that, Russian roulette, first one's a bullet and they're gone. Yep. I have a question right now that our audio guy just asked in my ears. Let's go ahead and do it. All right. So uh, Chris is asking, he's just wondering, you were mentioning a lot of people tend to walk away from their faith and pursue Buddhism rather than Hinduism. Why does that happen when Hinduism is the foundation of yoga? So you get Buddhism, you get Hindu. Well, first of all, uh, remember Buddhism is essentially a, a countercultural movement to Hinduism. They share a lot of the same philosophies. Mm. And in America, especially, you're more likely to go to Buddhism than you are to Hinduism directly. Mm-hmm. A Buddhism is much more widely accepted as a philosophy, and the underlying tenets are similar. Um, exactly why Buddhism, I'd have to go back and see if they mention anything in the article, mm-hmm. uh, but it wouldn't shock me because Buddha versus, Buddhism versus Hinduism, it's more common for people uh, to convert, directly convert to Buddhism than probably Hinduism, but it's much more common for people to gain a Hinduistic philosophy or worldview mm. um, directly through yoga. It's a good question. Fascinating. Okay, so we keep using the term Christian yoga, Christian yoga, Christian yoga, and we talked about how it kind of didn't even really make sense. But what would some of the differences be between Christian yoga and, you know, a Hinduistic yoga? So what's important to recognize is that Christian yoga still holds to all eight arms or limbs of yoga. Hmm. 
Yeah. See, it holds to all of them, including the final one, the one that focuses on enlightenment. What they do is they just try and change each of the arms so that it's relating to God. So, for example, with the meditation arm, uh, they talk about, well, meditate on God. With the enlightenment arm, they say, well, you're in union better with Christ. Uh, But the underlying philosophy is identical. And that's what people don't often realize, that there's this underlying Hindu philosophy. And that philosophy is that God and creation are really one thing. Hmm. And that what you have to do is simply recognize that. And Mm. that you can manipulate the created world, including your own body, breath, and and soul and mind, to connect with God and to become in union with God. And that's still there. All the poses are typically the same. They've just maybe renamed a lot of them. So it's really just a veneer. It really is still just yoga. And would Christian yoga also do like the same breaths with the postures? Like, are they actually doing like the Hinduist? Okay, so it's like... They're literally meditating on God, but doing the exact system and setup as a Hindu, uh, you know, original, you know, yoga would do. So they're actually calling on the same spirits while they're thinking of God. Yes. Yeah. In body and in practice, they're doing the exact same thing that that Hinduistic yoga people are doing. And that's the combination you need to engage with those ancient rituals. There's nothing else that you need to do because it has nothing to do with the mind. You were saying like you can think of whatever you want when you're taking drugs, but the drugs are going to still have an effect. So it's like, call it Christian, but the same setup and system, you're going to have that same negative result, no matter what you're thinking of. That's crazy. It's, it's unbelievable. Well, and again, I've talked to people who, who do Christian yoga and things and, you know, for a lot of them, it is spiritual now. It started as physical, but it did become spiritual. Mm-hmm. And the way they talk about God is decidedly not Christian anymore. Mm. And this is this is great for Hinduism. This is great for Hindu missionaries. Why? Because Hinduism is not convert to our exact religion. It's become part of the one world religion. Mm. It's become, it's syncretized with our philosophy. Wow. And now you're a Hindu, a Christian Hindu. Wow. And that's essentially what their goal is. That's why they said Christianity is almost gone. Well, why? Not because people weren't identifying as Christians, but because they had so effectively uprooted people's Judeo-Christian wow. worldview. Wow. 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 Okay. So the last question to say, okay, there's a young person watching. They're deeply engaged. And I think I know your answer already. It's probably going to be short and sweet, but what do you tell them? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. So to the question, um, should we do Christian yoga? My answer would be absolutely not. Mm-hmm. And for these four reasons. First, we see people walk away from Jesus as a result of being involved in it. Second, there's potential injury. Mm-hmm. Third, there's a possibility of struggling because it becomes a work-based religion. And fourth, because of demonic incursions. Mm-hmm. Why put yourself in a situation where you could be taken out like that? when there are great alternatives uh, that you could do for Christian exercise. There's just no need for it anymore. Yep. Amen. Amen. Good word. Dr. Chris, I appreciate you so much. It is always a treat. I wish I could interview you every week, every week. Uh, You should Uh, think about moving to Canada and uh, add one more thing to your resume. Not like you're doing much. (laughs) (laughs) Too true. Uh, but it's always uh, good to see you. Yeah. It's so good to see you, man. And, uh, best of, uh, you know, we're praying for you for all that you're doing, your church mission, all the new things you're up to. And, uh, we just really, really appreciate your time. Oh, thanks. I like you guys too. It's always good to, good to <laughs> spend time with you. Well, we're running out of friends, so we better just stay close because <laughs> it's going to get uh, pretty intense, but God bless you. And, uh, thanks again. Okay. Wow. That was a, that was a really, really good discussion, man. He has so many good points. He's so organized, so well thought. Um, that was, I'm really grateful for that conversation. Um, I mean, I think the biggest thing that stuck out for me and I'll just kind of just start us off if that's all right with you guys, even though go for it. Perfect. Um, it's your show. Uh, Andrew. It's not, it's ours, <laughs> man. Um, but, uh, I feel like just the idea of, uh, this missions work he was talking about, how like the biggest missions organization is not actually a Christian organization. It's like yeah. a Hindu organization. And one of the arms that they use for missions in the Western world is yoga because mm. naturally it will bring Christian people away from Christianity and into more non-religious mm-hmm. spiritual practices. So that mm-hmm. was just like a mind blowing. And he yeah. didn't, he didn't mention like, you know, 
for the new Christian or someone who is early on their faith, how easily it could be for them to, mm-hmm. you know, or the nominal Christians, yeah. people that don't take their, like the statistics yeah. he shared yeah, uh, about like people like starting yoga and then going, just turning spiritual. It's like, I would obviously question like how seriously did they even take their faith? If they're, if it's like you're going to yoga class and you're denouncing your faith, it's like, okay, you were, <laughs> that's, that's <Yeah>. laughable. <laughs> like, okay, you, it was, it, you, Bold of you to even call yourself a Christian in the first place. Not not diminishing the effects it could yeah. have, but I feel like a good majority of that, at least. For, I mean, obviously, I'm just pulling those numbers out of my butt. But but could you could <laughs> yeah. you could you say then, like uh, for all the because I know a lot of people who are Christian mm-hmm. and um, they love yoga. Yeah. So how do we wrestle with that if they're doing like the traditional spiritual practice of yoga? Well, I would just say, oh, that's something that you love. If you knew the truths about it, would you then choose to come under the authority of Christ and re- renounce that? Or like, is, mm-hmm. is it an ing- ignorance thing? I was going to say, Because yeah, it's like, I, oh, that's just a fleshly desire. Like, I, I enjoy doing this. Yeah. I don't see They the might not know. It. Yeah. They yeah. might not know. Yeah. 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 Or if they do know, and then that's something that the Holy Spirit would just have to convict right. them of. Right. So. Yeah, I know that's you. I pray for them. Yeah, for sure. Because I think, uh, I think... Same thing when we walk through the Enneagram. It's like maybe there's a lot of people who are watching that. who yeah. literally had no idea yeah, so about the, the roots yeah. or the history. Oh, I thought it was just literally stretches and I do it for exercise and yeah. I feel good. Um, or even the sort of deception mm-hmm. of, oh, I can do it, but just think thoughts about God. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah. Like there, mm-hmm. it's It was interesting kind of the, the distinction he made mm-hmm. between Christian yoga, which sounds good but then when you actually yeah. look at it it's just yoga and you're still <laughs> opening same yourself thing, yeah. up as compared yeah. to stretches yes and how just having those thoughts in your mind mm-hmm. isn't yeah quite that that doesn't quite mm-hmm. cut it it doesn't work and he yeah. mentioned he gives the example of like medication it's like you're gonna take this crazy medication or you're taking yeah. drugs it's like as long if you keep thinking to yourself okay the drugs are not going to affect me i'm not going to get addicted i'm not going to get addicted mm. Well, the drugs are not going to care what you think, and they're <laughs> yeah. just going to do what they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's like you can't really try to think about God yeah. and do these other things that are actually like demonic, mm-hmm. you know, weird yeah. spiritual things, and think that you can get away yeah. with it. Yeah, by exactly, the way, yeah. and by the way, all resources I want to make sure are available at indoubt.ca. You can go to other resources page, and at the end of this episode, you can see all the links. We'll put links and different things so you can see these resources for yourself. He mentions a lot of things. And so I want to make sure that we do mm-hmm. our due diligence. So if you go to this website, go to our website, you can see mm-hmm. all the links and all the resources there. It's all there. It's, yep. You got to do some digging. Oh, Chris, you were doing some digging and it's kind of, you got to dig pretty deep yeah. to find some of the stuff. Yeah. Like the whole quote about uh, Hinduism having the largest missionary arm. Yeah. Couldn't find anything about that. Yeah. I found the the letter about the person, the Hindu shaman or uh, right. whoever <laughs> writing writing this the the letter to evangelicals i did find that oh was, you did yeah yeah so we'll leave um, that available too so just we have all the things available it's real and yeah it, we're not making this stuff up but yeah. Yeah. um but it's tough because a lot of this stuff that seems like like a non-issue to a lot of christians it's like that's usually the the defense it's like why are you guys like you guys are like over spiritualizing i guys, know yeah. and it's like it's like it's like that's that's how the enemy yep like gets in it's 100%. like through these like really like small incremental things like like, don't deceive yourselves. Mm-hmm. Like, you're more susceptible to the enemy than you you probably realize if that's your yeah. if that's your position. And yeah. like, that doesn't mean you need, you need to be all worked up about it. Um, like, we're not, you know, yelling at you to stop doing yoga here. But like, you know, it's good to be aware of. Be it. aware of the reality yeah. of what it is and what it does. Yeah. Um, and and I think, you know, even when I listen to Dr. Chris Berg. For this one and when we did the Enneagram, it's like, okay, is this a little far fetched? Like, are we just kind of but then it's like, no, but the Bible is pretty clear that mm-hmm. there's that there's things to be careful of. And these religions, I uh, include Enneagram as well, as Hinduism yeah. and yoga and all that kind of stuff, yeah. like they have goals and they have yeah. like it's they there's, do. An, there's an agenda. Yeah. There is an agenda. It's, it's, it's like, not just a personality test or it's not yeah. just a stretch. Yeah, uh, there's something deeply yeah. rooted. Oh, the in Enneagram it. is a, is a more obvious one because it's like, oh, the guy was literally doing yeah, the like writing automatic writing stuff. Automatic yeah. writing. Oh, it's like, yeah. bro. Well, with, you know, <laughs> actually, because remember you said like yoga is like, or maybe it was something that I, re- I read, but yoga is like linked to Hinduism. Mm-hmm. Like you can't be a Hindu without yeah. doing yoga, and like yoga yeah. is like salvation yeah. for them, sort yeah. of. 
thing. Mm-hmm. So it's like, when you think about it that way, it's like, yeah, pretty. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty obvious, pretty agenda. clear. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And so, and we just want to be aware and just bring to light. Maybe we don't think about this much, specifically in the West, mm-hmm. um, but there is a lot of demonic activity in stuff like this. Mm-hmm. It's not just a stretch. And it's not just yeah. a personality test. There are things that um, have demonic influence and can have influence over you if you open the door. Yeah. And I think we need to be careful about that. I know Dr. Chris Berg talked about the idea of like a Russian roulette where it's like, you know, when you mess with yoga, it's like Russian roulette. You might first shot might be the bullet that's going to take you out. Mm-hmm. And so when it comes to the demonic, um, I don't know how I feel about that. Cause I just feel like once we open the door, like what is Satan not going to come in sometimes? <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. I brought that up with him cause I just don't know. I feel like anytime we open naively or intentionally, mm-hmm. yeah, I think we're putting ourselves in danger. I don't know if it is Russian roulette or if it's just yeah, something can like, I don't know. Like, I feel like we talk about this, the, the devil's not a gentleman. He's not going to yeah. wait for a proper invitation. We yeah. open the door to him with some spiritual witchcraft yeah. stuff. It's mm-hmm. like... Actually, this is an interesting point. This is kind of a side note, but not really. John Newfield, um, in a message recently, he, or maybe last year, he was talking about like how the number of... This is like a really weird topic. The number of demons in the world like hasn't changed since, the, like, since there were demons, like the same amount, but the human population has increased like huh. a significant amount. Are the opportunities then for not that we need to let our guards down, but like, are the opportunities yeah. like less or more? I don't even know how that would, that'd be an interesting, that's another, that's another that's topic. And, but so do the, the, also the number of angels as well, but obviously God is infinite in that, but that's a really, uh, I've never thought of that in my no. life. Well, my perspective like, is like, ratio. Oh, quality of life globally has gone up. Is that a result of <laughs> getting into like conspiracy theories and like, you gotta get your we're, tin hat, we're in the best, we're in the best point in the history of the world. And I wonder if that has to do with literally Satan's ability to... But don't we see a lot of, like, uh, you know, we see what's happening in public schools and mm-hmm. what's happening, whatever. It's like, it seems like it's also getting darker. Mm. Maybe that's yeah. demonic influence Maybe that... over specific leaders and mm-hmm. school councils and whatever. Like yeah, still... yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. And then they're kind of, that's infiltrating into schools and then yeah. that kind of has a more global... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Interesting point of discussion. That's a really yeah. interesting point of discussion because it's yeah. like if the numbers are staying the same, then are they just targeting kind of the head of, you know, big organizations basically <laughs> to take more people down? Yeah. Inter- <laughs> this is some Jones that's, level. This is, <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that guy. That is a random thought. Because uh, John, yeah. John mentioned that in, a, uh, in one, of his, one of his sermons. But. That it, seems it wild. Thinking, yeah. I, I have to do some digging. We yeah, don't have any yeah, resources available for you on that. Uh, maybe we can get some. Of the, maybe we get that John message. Yeah, just that that we can find that. Um, that's very fascinating. I never thought about it. But the demonic is real. Demons are real. Evil's real. The spiritual world is real. And we just have to be aware of that. I think in the West, we get so bombarded and so busy with a whole bunch of things that just distract us from God being a priority. So it's like the devil doesn't need to reveal himself in certain ways because we're mm-hmm. just kind of doing our own thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas in, you know, like third world countries, like I hear of stories of people seeing like the craziest, wackiest things ever. Yeah. And so it's just a different world there. And so, but for here, for us who are in Canada or wherever you're listening, um, you know, don't forget that that's a, re- a real reality. Mm-hmm. And um, should we show this clip of this thing? Is that like a good time to show this clip? I think so, yeah. Like just to show the reality of what this looks like. What do you think? I know, Chris, you're like a... Oh, I- yeah, I wasn't sure if you were going to... I, I mean, don't know. It's, a, it's your call. You're the boss. You're the boss. This is your show. You're the most, you're the most immediate <laughs> what, wait, boss. What, of, what uh, clip was this? Was this the one we watched? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It was It was a long time ago. So and we won't mention this. the church, we won't mention the name, whatever. But yeah. um, but uh, just take a look at this clip. It's just... It overwhelms me when I see it. And it actually, like, turns my stomach. But I think it's hilarious. But, like, uh, evil. But It's I don't not know. hilarious. <laughs> it's, like, straight up evil. Yeah. I laughed. I'm sorry. He did laugh. It's terrible. Um, I tend to laugh at things that I shouldn't. 
guy. Like hey, there that. he goes again. <laughs> there he goes again. Just laughing. Joy the Lord. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just kidding. Um, all right, so we're not going to play it. We're not going to actually okay, play it in the show. Yeah. But we want to make it available to you. So there's, it's in the description. You can click the link. It's 22 seconds in. Just Disclaimer, though, it is pretty terrifying, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, the guy is going through a lot of torment when this thing happens. But um, but anyways, if you want to watch it, we'll just give you a couple seconds. Take a, Take a moment right now. We'll pause. Watch it. And we'll be right back. I'll freeze. <laughs> okay, so that clip is obviously overwhelming. I'm not sure why Brendan yeah, left, yeah, but yeah. Um, it's actually quite like <laughs> it's quite overwhelming. It's like, just what she says, like this yeah. is the best thing ever, and then he's just violently and he's like screaming. Vi- obviously, the guy is going through torment and torture yeah. like it's yeah. very clear he's screaming yeah. he's crying he's convulsing he can't control his body anymore and it happens right after she puts her hands on him and gives him whatever that was that she had the crown she's yeah asking everyone to pass on and doing this impartation mm. where people can pass on different spiritual stuff i don't want no spiritual junk from mm. nobody the reason i don't want to la- give anyone my crap yeah the reason i laugh is because a lot of the stuff i see like, like, especially when the people are like, holy spirit, and then they fall down. It's like, it's like, I can't tell if this is real. And sometimes yeah, I think I it's completely bogus, and that's why I laugh. But this is like, yeah, the guy looked like he was. Yeah, he's literally being tortured. Time, yeah. He's being tortured. He's screaming at the top of his lungs, and yeah. the music plays louder, so they kind of like cover that up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that was weird. He started like, playing. You his, could tell they're like, oh, no, what's going quiet, on? This is and crazy. Yeah. He's just yelling. And then she says, she yells, I think he got it. I think he got it. <laughs> it's like, got uh, what? Yeah, oh right. Goodness, yeah. What did you just give him? Um <laughs> honestly, I think some of the stuff is is really we're just really we're dabbling in really weird stuff. And I think when we walk away from scripture mm-hmm. and start saying, Thus mm-hmm. says the Lord, and she keeps saying, Thus says the Lord, pass the crown to someone else. Like, when did the Lord what? tell me yeah. to impartate my impart my spiritual junk on someone else? Yeah. Give them my crown. Yeah. Like, I just don't see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's like when you and, and and then again, this opens the door to some pretty obviously that guy's mm-hmm. response is not a good response. There's obviously yeah. some kind of demonizing yeah. or spiritual, you know. Yeah. Notice how this never happens in reformed churches. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Honestly, just calm. Bible but preaching. I mean, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. And, and I know a lot of reformed churches think charismatic churches are crazy and charismatic. That is church. not. I wouldn't even consider that. That's like hyper charismatic. Yeah, yeah. That, I go oh, to I go yeah, to a yeah, Pentecostal yeah. church. Yeah, yeah. I don't oh, for sure, for sure, yeah. for sure. That's like it's over not. the top charismatic. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. they're charismaniacs for sure. Charismaniacs. <laughs> but <laughs> but I think the charismaniacs look at the reforms and they go, like, oh, wow, it's like they're you're so cold the and you're crushing the spirit. And then the yeah. reforms are thinking, wow, you're swinging off chandeliers, and you're barking like dogs. That's probably not in the Bible. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I I just I think it's safe to lean towards the Bible and <laughs> yeah. reading the Bible. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? But yeah. but I think things get messy and things get you know uh, dangerous. And I think yoga, enneagram, opening yourself up to spiritual things and mm. doing spiritual practices that we don't see in Scripture, like passing crowns and passing your own spirit to other other people. This stuff is all just it, it's it's bigger than we think. Yeah, it's more serious than we think, and so we need to think about it seriously mm-hmm. and be very careful. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I know some of you might be really upset. Um, some of you might be just blown away at maybe the history that you didn't know about. I was blown away by the history because I just didn't mm-hmm. know much about it. So um, that was really fascinating to me. But we try to do these and try to get biblical perspectives of things that are happening in life to help to bring resources to you. Um, and so we hope that's what we do. We hope it's a blessing. It's a gift to you. Again, resources at indoubt.ca. Please like, subscribe, follow, share um, if this has been resourceful for you and um, it could hopefully bless someone else as well. But uh, that's it from me. Chris, any final words or is that it from you? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's I've it. said enough. <laughs> uh, we've said <laughs> enough. Happy Monday or whenever you watched this. <laughs> But watch it on Monday because we have a good time on Mondays. Yep. So when in doubt, figure it out. How? How? Read your Bible. <laughs> Read your Bible. There you go. And uh, if you are in yoga, stop it. <laughs> stop it? Can I say that? I think so. Loving That's what he said. Well, bring it to the Lord. Yeah. And everyone's on their own journey. Yes. And ask the Holy Spirit um, 
what uh, what the next steps for you should yeah. be. Yeah, and not genuinely gonna, be. We're op- not going to tell you. Yeah, genuinely be open to his conviction if yes. that's what. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. But we love you guys. We really we do, and we're doing this because we want to see you flourish. And so uh, mm-hmm. have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday.